Welcome back friends. If you happen to subscribe to my channel for recipes, then you tuned in on a really, really great day. Not only am I sharing my recipe for ginger sesame kebabs, as well as a bonus recipe for pickled ginger, but I'm also going to be sharing my first experiences with ButcherBox. If you're not familiar with ButcherBox, it's basically an online company that provides really, really high quality meat. Uh, they have beef, chicken, and pork. The proteins that are available through ButcherBox actually come from hand-selected producers, ranchers, and farms. So if you've been on the lookout for really high quality meats that you can't find locally, then ButcherBox is an excellent, excellent choice. So while I already keep a really almost impeccable diet right now, I thought that there was definitely room for improvement, especially when it comes to the choices that I make for my proteins. ButcherBox makes it extremely easy to have high quality, grass-fed, grass-finished, humanely treated proteins accessible to you all year round. All of the beef is 100% grass-fed and grass-finished, never given any antibiotics or hormones. ButcherBox sources both free-range organic chicken as well as pasture-raised chicken. All of the ButcherBox chicken is certified humane, which means that the chickens have access to the outdoors, to shelter, are naturally fed, and have plenty of room to move around. The pork is heritage bred and completely free of antibiotics and hormones. Did you know that 97% of the beef that's found in this country is actually grain fed and processed in feedlots? Because of the crowded conditions, these cattle are often fed antibiotics to help prevent the spread of disease. Grain fed cattle can also grow to a really unnatural weight due to the administration of these growth hormones and fillers like corn, soy, animal byproducts such as bone meal, blood meal, and feather meal. Saying it is disgusting enough, I won't be putting any of that in my body anymore. Ordering is so super simple and I love that you have a few different options of how you want to structure your boxes. The curated boxes are kind of fun because you never really know exactly what you're going to get. Each month it's going to be something different. I love having the option to do a completely custom box. The classic box is $149 a month. It would come with 12 to 16 pounds of meat, which would equal about 30 meals. For the next few days, you'll also get $11 off of your first order, plus two free filet mignons. Ordering is extremely easy. All you have to do is go on the ButcherBox site. You'll put in your email address. You'll put in your zip code to make sure they service your area. Then you'll just choose your box. You can pick from a mix box, beef and pork, all beef, or you can do the custom box. You'll have two sizes of boxes to pick from, either 12 to 16 pounds or 20 to 26 pounds. Then you'll just have to narrow down which type of proteins that you would like and what type of cuts you'd want. Then once you've put your main box together, they have this really neat feature where you can actually have add-ons. I love having this option because say for example, you have went ahead and planned out a lot of your meals that you're gonna have for the month. So you've covered your six choices in this custom box, but you've been really wanting to try a different recipe. All you have to do is you can just add on any of these custom items as well. Once the order is complete, you'll get a shipping date, and then once the order arrives, it'll come in a handy little insulated bag like this. And so for my first order, I got some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. I got a pork tenderloin and I also got a couple of pounds of just plain grass-fed ground beef. I also got some grass-fed beef strip loin steak. I got the top sirloin steak that I'm using in today's recipe. I also got some grass-fed ribeye steak. Everything arrives frozen, so all you have to do when it comes is defrost whatever that you might be using in the next couple of days or just toss it right into the freezer. 
Super easy, super simple, and ButcherBox is a great option for people that can't find really, really high quality proteins locally. All right, are you ready to get into today's recipe? Let's get started. So for this recipe, I decided to go ahead and pick the grass-fed top sirloin steak. And again, these are completely grass-fed and grass-finished, no hormones, no antibiotics. They'll come in these individual packages. All you have to do is defrost them when you are ready to make your meal. And honestly, one look at this meat and you can see how high quality that it really, really is. Such amazing color and the texture on this. I literally could have used a butter knife to slice this up. Look at how easy the knife goes through it. One cut and it's ready to go. Before I even cooked it or tasted it, I could already tell that it was going to be extremely tender and extremely flavorful. So for this particular recipe, I went ahead and sliced this up into one inch cubes. This would be perfect for the kebabs. I really can't get over how high quality this meat is. I'm beyond pleased. I don't think I'll ever buy meat again anywhere else. And I felt this way before even tasting it. Once the meat is sliced up, you'll go ahead and tackle the marinade. I start with a couple of tablespoons of avocado oil. This is a monounsaturated fat. It has a really high cooking point, high in oleic acid, and helps to raise good cholesterol. Next, you'll need some coconut aminos. This is my replacement for soy sauce. It's gluten-free, high in minerals, contains 17 amino acids, is also high in vitamins B and C, and also has a neutral pH. Then you'll need to add some rice wine vinegar. This is my go-to option whenever I'm making any Asian dishes. It's calorie-free, sodium-free, rich in antioxidants. It's also antibacterial and can help boost digestive health. Then you'll just need some sesame oil. This is rich in zinc, copper, and calcium. It also contains tyrosine, which will help boost serotonin levels. Just remember, a little of this goes a long, long way. You'll also need a little bit of chili paste. This one is my favorite. If you can tolerate chili, it's a wonderful thing to add to your diet. It's rich in capsaicin, which is ironically really great for pain relief. It can also help with neuropathy as well as help with the cardiovascular system. You'll also need something to sweeten it up a little bit. I love this Manuka honey. Despite it not being completely keto, this is something that I would definitely try to incorporate in moderation. Honey is rich in minerals, amino acids, it's high in vitamin B, and is really wonderful for the digestive system. Next, we have some freshly chopped garlic. Garlic is a staple in my diet. It is such a powerhouse of nutrients. Antimicrobial, antiviral, antifungal, cardioprotective, and really high in antioxidants. If you're not already eating garlic every day, you definitely need to be. And then some ginger, another powerhouse of nutrients. This is so, so wonderful for your stomach. It can help improve digestion, nausea. It's antimicrobial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and it will even improve proper food transport in the digestive system. My favorite way to peel this is I like to grab one little chunk and then I chop off one of the ends to give it a base. Then all I have to do is run my knife along the sides to remove the skin and then just chop it up into whatever size I need. For this recipe, I just needed it roughly chopped. Then I'll just add a little bit of salt and some pepper. At this point, you'll wanna go ahead and taste the marinade and adjust the seasonings to whatever your preference is. You can also add a little bit more sweetener if you like, more sesame oil, or some extra chili if you want it spicy. I decided on some surf and turf action, so I went ahead and added some jumbo shrimp to this threw the pieces of top sirloin into a bowl with the shrimp, and then I just added the marinade. I stirred it up and covered it and then put it in the fridge. I think I let mine marinade in the fridge for just a couple of hours. While it was doing its thing, I went ahead and I worked on my pickled ginger. This is a bonus recipe for you guys today. I've really been obsessed with this pickled ginger lately, probably for the last month or so. It's such a great thing to add on any of your Asian dishes, on fish, and even into your salads. 
I always peel my ginger the exact same way. I chop off one of the ends, use it as a base, and then I run my knife along the sides to remove the skin. You can chop the ginger into whatever size you like, but I have been obsessed with my new mandolin. I've had other mandolins in the past, but really none like this one. Such high quality and I don't have to worry about chopping my fingers off. For this pickled ginger, I went ahead and just put it on the thinnest setting. Then to pickle it, all you'll need is a cup of water. You'll need a little bit of rice wine vinegar and a really hefty serving of some salt. You'll go ahead and just bring this mixture to a boil. Then you will turn off the heat and to sweeten it up, I used stevia. Like I said, because I have been using this pickled ginger so much, I needed to keep it completely keto, so traditional sweeteners were not gonna be an option. Then you just have to throw in all of your ginger. And once it's completely cooled, you'll go ahead and you can just put it into jars and store them in the fridge. For this batch I made, I had the really thin slices and then I also just had some roughly chopped ones that I like to throw in my salads. With the meat marinated now, you'll go ahead and just assemble your skewers. You can pick whatever veggies that you like. I used red onion and some bell pepper, but kind of wish that I would have added zucchini. It would have worked really well in this. Asparagus would have also been a great option, but I made this at the end of the week, so my pickings for vegetables were a little bit slim. And also, since I knew that I was gonna be throwing these onto the grill, I went ahead and soaked the wooden skewers for about 20 minutes before I loaded them up. The package of two top sirloin steaks from ButcherBox gave me about six skewers. And then I had another four skewers because I also incorporated the shrimp. Once these were all ready to go, I fired up the grill, got it smoking hot. I cooked the beef until it was medium rare and just cooked the shrimp until they turned pink. Dinner is served. I serve these over a nice big bed of cabbage slaw added some of the fresh pickled ginger right on top, and then I even used some of the liquid from the pickled ginger as my dressing. I garnished this simply with some sesame seeds as well as some freshly cut green onion. I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. If you give it a try, please let me know in the comments below. I also hope that you have enjoyed the information that I've shared about ButcherBox. I really hope that you'll give them a try because honestly, once you make your first order and you taste this meat, you, you won't want to buy your proteins anywhere else. I promise. The quality on them really, really is amazing. You can taste the difference between these quality meats and the meats that you'd find either at Costco or at the regular grocery store. If you are interested in trying ButcherBox out for yourself, I have included a link that's below. And for the next couple of days, I think that they're running a promotion where you get $11 off of your first order as well as two free filet mignons. That is a really, really great deal. Thanks again, and until next time.